G'day everybody, Simon here, Explosive Action, and I am back with an OG 80s heavy metal and thrash metal update. Only got four to take a look at, so let's get into it. It's been a bit slim pickings out there for me trying to get some original press stuff from the 80s and early 90s in the heavy metal, speed metal, thrash metal. Hasn't been that uh, many things out there that I've wanted to get that I didn't already have, or the prices are just ridiculous, whatever, but I've managed to get four here over the last couple of months that we're gonna have a quick look at now. So the first one here, uh, it's actually kind of funny because I showed in the previous update around uh, original press vinyl, I showed an album from this band and I said, I don't know, I might get this one at some point, we'll see, you know, what happens and, you know, it, it like a week later. A week later, Overkill taking over. So I think I showed the third album, Under the Influence, uh, probably two months ago at this point. Um, and at the time, like I said, I said, um, Overkill, not a band I am obsessive about at all. Took me a long time to really get into this band because I think I approached from the wrong album. And the problem I had with this band, vocals. The first three albums, Feel the Fire, that's an absolute classic. That is a, that is a 80s thrash classic. I'll hear nothing else about it. It's a great album. Had that one for the longest. That's great. The one I got recently was Under the Influence. That's their third album. It's a bit more polished. Uh, it's still very much a thrash album. The vocals are still fine. After that album, something happened, at least to my ears. It becomes really difficult to listen to that guy sing. I don't know what happened. Uh, that's just what I'm hearing anyway. But the, well, there was one in the middle, the Sophomore album here, which is Taking Over. And um, I was always, you know, kind of interested in picking up the middle one. I'd heard some things not so great. Um, some people say really great. And, uh, you know, eventually it showed up for a good price, actually a very good price. It usually uh, ends up being the most expensive of the three. Um, this, I think, I don't know, I think, I think the guy graded it a bit, um, a bit harshly, like the VG. It's probably why I got it cheaper. It's definitely better than that. It's, it's a strong VG plus, so it plays great too. Anyway, taking over. So yeah, their second album. Um, yeah, it's something I was, I guess, a little bit put off by this cover. Kind of screams to me like 80s glam. And like, if you look into it, no, they're holding guns, they're pointing them at you. But if you're looking just briefly at it, it's pink and purple and perm hair. And look, I know that's supposed to be bullets coming from the guns, but it looks like a bedazzler, guys. It look, it looks like you're bedazzling your denim jackets next to your poison and your docking patches. So that kind of put me off. But getting past all that, it's a bit of a belter, I gotta say. Um, I mean, the, the song titles. Uh, the first track's called Deny the Cross. Now, no glam band's gonna start with a track called Deny the Cross. Then it's followed by Wrecking Crew, Fear His Name. Um, you know, like it's the power surge on side two. You're starting to lose that impression very quickly, which is good because that is not what they sound like. Um, but that, that track, that second track, Wrecking Crew, is a really good thrasher. Um, if you've not heard Overkill for some reason, think sort of like, uh, the same period uh, Exodus is probably the closest example I think um, not as loose as like bonded by blood but you know more mature than that uh, has the venom of nuclear assault but not the punky kind of hardcorey uh, angsty parts of nuclear assault um, and it has sort of the there's an overall feeling through this album of sort of metal church at least the first album. Metal Church is not a thrash band, um, but vocally here, and also just when these guys are not full pelt, there is a lot of Metal Church in this sound, is what I'm hearing as well. So, yeah, you know, all that old mid-80s stuff, but not glam, importantly. Silly cover, should have redone it at the time. Um, that track, Fear His Name, that I mentioned, that, that one's probably the closest to actually being like a Metal Church song, you know, it is... Um, it's, it's not a, a fast one or anything, it's just a straight ahead kind of banger. Um, but then there's his track called Use Your Head. And we're just, everything I've said, just take it all back, at least lyrically. Doesn't sound like it, but you know, it's that period of time where these bands had sleaze songs. Sleaze songs are usually attributed to your sort of you know, your New York and your LA strip bands and your glam stuff. but. Yeah, use your head. Some lyrics, if you don't mind. I see you like the band. Don't leave me with my hand. 
Stick around, I'll throw you a bone. Alcohol and sluts pull me from my rut, second only to the attraction. I just, okay. Thank you, overkill. Thankfully, it's not all like that. Um, but you know, it, it's it's what you did at those days, I suppose. Uh, but I always, this is why I like the German bands just that bit more. They were just about fucking violence and Satan. They didn't particularly go down this route. Um, but anyway, total cheese. But the riffs are really good in that track. Uh, the side B opener, Power Surge. Um, that one I reckon sounds more like a Heathen song, and that's a good thing. I mean, Heathen's great band. Um, then there's a track called In Union We Stand. Now, I think they probably designed this to be like a crowd participation song because it's like, In Union We Stand. Yeah, it's like listening to a Queen song or something, but the thrash metal version. Um, yeah, it's fun, but yeah, could have been something else. You should put in something faster. Anyway, um, but then, thankfully, we move on to uh, Electro Violence. Uh, we're getting to the end here. Yeah, Electro Violence. That one, um, that one takes us back to that ripping sound, that nuclear assault kind of sound. So it's just straight ahead savagery, and that's what I really want to hear from Overkill. So, yeah, it's a mixed bag. Like you, you it, it's all pretty much. You could say this is a thrash album. It has a few tracks that pull it back, that are a bit metal churchy. It has some silly lyrics in some songs, um, and it has this sort of crowd participation, like an anthemic thing in Union We Sand. So, you know, um, overall, good album. Um, I'm still going to rate it third out of the three that I've got, but uh, yeah, I feel the fire just completely destroys. And I don't have this overwhelming desire to, you know, continue on with the band. Um, you know, I know they're still going. There's plenty of albums after this. There's, there's probably still albums in the 80s after this. I think uh, Years of Decay is the fourth one. Um, you yeah, know, maybe I'll give that a, a go again one day, but I seem to recall that one not doing too much for me. There's the it's a Mega Force and Atlantic Press. So, yeah, it's really nice. Um, like, it's a strong VG+. Plus. Not quite near me, but, you know, VG++. Sounds great. No cracks, no pops, any of that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, now I remember why this was downgraded. Um, the inner sleeve. So, you can see it's a bit wavery. This is why I got it for a good price. Um, it's actually got... It's dried off like 20 years ago, but it's got a little bit of mold spots. Um, some At some point, somebody seriously, you know, spilled the bong water on this. And you can see in the sleeve, perhaps it does have some old spotting up there, but it's completely dry. There's nothing I can do about it. And like, it's the inner sleeve. I'm not that fussed, to be honest. I've said this before, like, there is something for me about, you know, 80s albums with their corner dings and, you know, the rough spines. As long as the record plays really, really good, I could give a shit. It adds to the, just, you know, it adds a bit of, you know, authority almost. Like it makes it a real thing. That's why I like these OG presses. So anyway, Overkill, Taking Over. They're not going to be taking over anything with this one. It is the third album, but yeah, for me in, in terms of priority, but it is still a good album. So yeah, Overkill, Taking Over. Next up, we have an album with a title that makes you think of some kind of blasphemous death metal, or at least it did for me. That is not at all what you're getting here. This is Hell Bastard with Heading for Infernal Darkness. You see what I mean? Like, it sounds like a Dark Funeral uh, album title or something. Um, but no, not at all. What you get here, this is some very crusty 1988 thrash out of the UK. And when I say crust, I mean these guys as far as I could work out, effectively coined that term. Uh, they had a demo in 1986 called Ripper Crust, uh, which don't I don't think quite invented that sort of subgenre. Um, that kind of predates back to Amoebix, another UK band. Um, but, you know, that's where the term came from, Crust. Tell me in the comments if that is inaccurate, but that's what I've been gathering. Um, and uh, this is... This is actually exactly what it says. It is it is crusty thrash. It um, I think I think people with with the band Hellbastard, you may not even realise it. You look at this logo, this cover. Now look at this one. This is the one I think most people kind of recognise. That's when they were in uh, Earache Records in 1990, and it was a very different beast then. They were definitely sort of pulled off that crust and just said, "We're going to go for thrash. We're going to put a bit of groove in there as well." And it was on an earache, which now we're doing death metal and grind. They kind of should have stayed. They should have done this, but then blast beats, and they would have fit far more in with earache's roster in, in 1990. 
Uh, but no, they, they sort of stripped it back a bit, which was, I, I don't know, um, probably explained why that cover was something that resonated with me, because I think I saw that in Bargain Bins for years later on CD, uh, but never picked it up. Anyway, this is their first one from 1988. It's a bit of a different beast. Um, this actually came out on the very small time label here in England called Mean Time Records with like this little hand-drawn like kids cartoon kind of thing going down there. It's all very like, yeah, Mean Time Records. It's probably just the band's imprint. I don't know. I've never heard of them before. Um, so really what you get here, if you don't, when I just say crust, if you don't know what I'm talking about, and it's not a thing that I'm particularly familiar with, you know, the word crust, I start thinking of like, you know, um, Pat's channel, not, not so much things that I would generally talk about. Um, this is nine tracks, including two instrumentals of just raw, bottom heavy thrash, uh, snarled vocals somewhere between Godflesh and Power Trip. Now, Power Trip for me, that's a modern band, obviously, and uh, as I'm sort of approaching this crust thing backwards, I see a lot of similarities here uh, with what Power Trip did on uh, Nightmare Logic and what we have here in this album here. Um, you know, it's single guitar thrash. Uh, there's no crazy melodies, there's no solos, it's just bludgeoning thrash. It doesn't go into like, you know, D beat kind of thrash, it doesn't go into lots of double kicks. Pretty sure the drummer's only got the one kick drum. Let's have a look at the picture. I, I'm only seeing one, I don't see a second one there. I think he's one of those guys, it's just sick, like, it, it's, it's from punk thrash. But it's not crossover, this is not a crossover kind of thing, it doesn't sound like that. It's that third thing, Crust Thrash. Um, it's bloody good, is what this is. Uh, like, there's so many points in here approaching it from what I am more familiar with, like Grindcore, where I hear, you know, I, I keep expecting to hear a four count and then a bunch of blasting like Napalm Death, but they don't. They always stay back from that. You can feel it coming, but it never gets to that. They just stay at this fast, crusty thrash pace the whole time. Um, you're more likely to get Rain in Blood style riffs on here than you are anything from like from enslavement to obliteration. Um, it, as I said, like it's just single guitar focused. I mean, I, I've taken a guess at that. Is it? Well, yeah, there's, a, there's Scotty on bass. There's Scruff on guitars and vocals. Uh, there's Mad Grind. What the hell is Mad? Phil on drums and percussion. I'm guessing Mad Grinders is just a collective for the band. Mad Grinders. They look like they are Mad Grinders. Um, it is kind of like. This whole crust thing, at least from this representation here, to me it's like grind without the grind. It's exactly what it sounds like to me. This is Napalm Death, but they're not Napalm Death. It's like Extreme Noise Terror, dialed back a bit. That's what I'm getting from this kind of stuff. Um, and you know it's got that pissed off, angry sound to it. The vocals are just spat out, they're venomous. And the song titles, I mean, like, you've got Civilized with a question mark, which is totally something Napalm Death would do. Three, Nazis killed, death camp, massacre, um, African beggar, rise of crust, which is the instrumental on the end. Like it's, it's not your testament thrash. It's not your Bay Area thrash. It's not your Germanic thrash. It is this crusty sounding stuff. And to me, it's actually like, I find it quite re refreshing because I'm not that familiar with this kind of, um, this kind of subgenre besides modern bands like um, Power Trip. It's just not a thing that I'm really that familiar with. And I really dig the cover on this one as well. Like, it's not what you'd expect. It, it is very abnormal. And like, honestly, is it, it's one of those things I look at and go, is that, is that it? Is that all we're getting? It's literally just the forest floor with some like animal limbs. Like there's this, I don't know. It's like a giant bird, like an ostrich arm or something. I don't know what the hell's going on. Uh, you got feathers and just ferns and like it's all been, I don't know, crushed and burnt or something? Are we sort of just saying like, you know, respect the rainforest or this is what humanity has done? Like, I don't quite know what the angle is here. I just kind of like how it looks. Big red logo, kind of orangey brown. I don't know. Uh, it, it doesn't really make me think that I'm heading for internal darkness. I suppose I am in some way. Burn the forests and we're all going to die. Uh, I don't know. But um, yeah, I like the cover on this one. And um, take a look at like the b-side on this um the title track the heading for internal darkness um that one is probably as close as you're going to get to your metallica style thrash for just a little bit at the start there that opening riff is such a close cousin to creeping death you just got to listen to it you'll hear it as well 
But then it goes away and we're sort of back into that meaty Rain and Blood style riffs, but you know, through a grindless Napalm Death. Um, I really love the distorted bass playing on this one as well. I guess that's Scotty over here on the backing vocals and the bass. Very nasty sounding stuff. It's distorted, I think, the whole time. Just very fuzzy and grindy. Um, really good stuff. Oddly, there's a, there's a couple of songs in here that have like spoken female vocals. Um, they come out of nowhere and it's just like a passage. Like she'll just sort of say a few words, not singing or anything. Kind of like, you know, like Cradle of Filth and that, I think, did that a few times. Not when, you know, Jessica, what's her name, was, was operatic, but they would just have somebody sort of speak, and lo, she'll come down from up the mountain. And like, there's a bit of that in here, but obviously politically grindy. Um, yeah, this is just vicious and nasty sounding, crusty thrash, and I'm really happy to have it. I'd like to hear more stuff like this. I'm just not familiar with it. Amoebix is one of the bands that gets referenced. Um, that predates 1985, I think, and that's probably a band I need to check out um, and see if it's the kind of thing that I like. If you know anything else that sounds like you know, this kind of crusty thrash where it's not crossover, crossover's a whole different beast to me. Let me know. I've been really curious to, to check more of this stuff out. Um, and there, there's the vinyl. It's nice and clean and like it's probably strong VG plus and there it is on that weird label again so yeah was there a lyrics in this I don't think there was no that's it the lyrics are read online so maybe I was supposed to get a lyric sheet I didn't get one but there you go hell bastard heading for internal darkness definitely worth the time speaking of internal darkness or infernal darkness let's talk about Satan but it's not that kind of Satan this is the UK band Satan uh, with their 1986 four-track EP, Into the Future. Very restrained cover on that one. I'm not too sure what's going on, like a nuclear blast and the logo on the front. Sort of the, that shattered, explosive-looking look, typo there. Like, it, yeah, it's pretty standard stuff. But uh, this is a really, really good EP. I lucked over this. It, it showed up on um, a uh, Melbourne distro a shop called The Searchers, which is a real shop, but uh, obviously it's in Melbourne. I've not actually been there, but I do order from them online. I was checking out their new stuff, and this was there. It's an original press. I thought, ooh, I will take that, please. This, as I said, 1986, follows up their 1983 full-length Caught in the Act, which is a bit of a classic in the new wave, British heavy metal, and um, getting into that early, very early speed metal sound. Um, this thing is ripping, absolutely ripping, more so than Caught in the Act. Like, they've just put the pedal down on the ground. The opening track on this one, look at the guys in the back here. My God. Like they've gone out and it's like a bucks party and they've gone out and played the most vicious game of paintball ever that is what's happened here either that or they were in the movie deadly prey uh, is this guy wearing a skirt i can't anyway um right first track key to oblivion um it's it's a fast opener uh lots of speed but almost power metal gallops in that has a really fun bridge that then goes into like a mid-song solo some of the pretty much most of the songs in here have that kind of structure to them like it, it'll have this bridge of melody and then doubles down for a really cool guitar solo the vocals on this one get quite soaring um, he's definitely trying for the higher notes at times this i think is the highlight track for me it's a powerful opener key to oblivion um, it's definitely worth the price of entry itself so that's what's really good the second track on here uh hear evil see evil speak evil uh, it slows it down it's more of a chunkier metal song um, the vocals just a little bit grittier in that mid kind of reminded me of like d snyder of that period just so we're not gonna take it that was a really shit impression um but it has a little bit more of that into it just a bit more grit into it um and the whole band i think sort of joins in on the chorus and sings the song title hear evil speak evil see evil um it's a fun one it's good um bit of a driving track another one has a good powerhouse solo leads into a high scream lots of chugging uh riffs in this one uh and i really like the drums in the verse on this one has a lot of hi-hat tricky like i don't know sort of jazz kind of stuff um that was cool I, I liked hearing that that was that was definitely different than your usual 4-4 kind of hi-hat stuff so that was fun uh then side two and i don't know what the backstory is with this i have no idea it's not what i would expect when you you look at this and you listen to court in the act it's not what i expect but side b opens with a song called fuck you that's what it's called um it's very rather coarsely named but uh is a very power metal kind of constant double kick that just like that 
double kick all the way through the whole thing under like a nice little chord progression that has like a classical style melody like even in part of it like they're building into this thing and then it starts riffing off uh, Moonlight Sonata I'm like hang on I know that in a song called Fuck You maybe that's what they're saying they're like oh fuck it you, your expectations fuck you we're just going to play this whatever the hell we like maybe that's what it's about I don't know um, aside from the gang shouts which is just the band saying fuck you it is an instrumental so okay but it leads quite nicely then into the last song called The Iceman which takes us back a little bit to that first song um, which is actually a bit more melodic it's like a almost Swedish sounding kind of track um, it's mid paced to fast but it has these very clever drums again really interesting drums uh, lots of Iron Maidenisms in this one that's very much the most Iron Maiden sounding track um, I love the vocals following the guitar harmonies that's what's really the standout on this one is that whatever the guitar's playing the vocals are following so that's really nice um, yeah this is a really solid EP um, about 18 minutes came out on uh, yeah on Steam Hammer down there so like I still don't own Caught in the Act on an OG I mean it costs quite a bit there was a copy that was sitting at Utopia Records and they wanted, um, yeah, well into the triple figures. Um, but, you know, one day I might get lucky and pick up an OG of that because I really like it. I've got the album after this on Original Press as well. The name escapes me at the moment, but that's really good. Um, I think that might have been when the vocalist was changing. But, uh, yeah, Into the Future. A solid, like, little gap there between uh, the first and the second album. <laughs> Take a look inside, nothing too exciting, it's just that Steam Hammer logo that you get on all their pressings of, of that era. Um, was there any lyrics? No, nothing else in there. That's it, it's just Satan into the future. Four track EP from 1986. The fourth and last thing I'm showing here is the absolute best of the bunch, the absolute pick. I was stoked to see this thing get listed. It was on eBay uh, less than two weeks ago. I, I managed to score this one. It came up on my, my hunt and the price was really good never shows up locally and it was let's just say near mint it's pretty close to it the only release from this band ever this is dark age maybe a little bit less than near mint there is stick it down in the corner up there but bloody hell it presents well dark age their self-titled ep dark age look at that cover that's heavy metal big dragon breathing fire that's just, that's metal that's like the attacker cover that's just metal as dude's got his signature right there on the front he wanted to be known. There's blood all over the claws. Outstanding. Um, it's like a really short album or a long EP. It's 24 minutes, six tracks, and it is the only thing this band's done. There's been a reissue on CD in recent years. That's it. I don't know of anything else that came out from Dark Age, but I think they're one of those bands that are quite well respected in the you know the fans of uh, 80s earlier you know early half of the 80s heavy metal. Uh, and I can see why, and that's why I was so happy to pick this up. Um, it's split over two sides, side tiger, side dragon. That made me happy. Um, and we're pretty much, for that opening track, we're in sort of quasi speed metal territory. Just a real fast heavy metal song. Opening track is called Metal Axe. Yes! So good. Um, it's just a mission statement, a solid mission statement. A riff salad, solos, real thundering drums. Um, vocally, you can sort of compare it to that Satan, but let's just say he's not as good. Just pull it back a bit. He's trying, trying to get there. It's their first EP, but just not, you know, Satan's been around for a bit longer. Dark Age, he's good, but he's not that good. Um, it's a bit more youthful, you know, less experienced, that kind of thing, but uh, yeah, not as good as the brilliantly named Michael Jackson from Satan. I still couldn't believe that was real when I read that. Uh, but anyway, overall, this band, a lot of charm. And yeah, that singer, he does, he goes for the high notes. Uh, overall, I think the sound is kind of in Omen, uh, Liege Lord, that kind of area. Um, that, in that first track anyway, really good. Second track is the band there. Look at those guys, five of them. To, uh, there's the Roadrunner stickers barely hanging on. Oof. It's actually just, it says Roadrunner and underneath it, it says Roadrunner. So I don't know what's been going on there. But anyway, uh, Tales of Medusa, second track on Side Tiger. <laughs> um, that one slows it down a bit. That, you know, that's your usual heavy metal style, Fast Ripper. And then the second track is the slower one. Still a big heavy number. That's good. Uh, the third track, Rock Revelation. Uh, that has a main riff. Now this, now, hear me out. 
hear me out. The main riff in that one, it's not quite tremor riff or anything, we're too early, but it has a feeling to it and the pace has like a Viking black metal feel to me. I know, I know, you're not, it, it, maybe it's just the dragons on the front have infected me, I don't know, but I get that hammer heart battery sound from Rock Revelation for parts of it. Go listen to it and, and tell me if I'm dreaming. Maybe I am, but that's what I'm getting from. It's very raw sound, um, and it just has a nice gallop to it. It's more of a progressive sounding track. Lots of sort of stop and start melodies on that one. It's really good. Now, Side Dragon opens with the execution slash messenger to Asheron. I'm not too sure why there's a slash. Um, heavy opening, but lots of good with, with bass guitar plucking, and it's really heavy sounding. Like dun 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 dun. Like really good stuff picks up the pace into what I would call like a driving song like as in you put it on the car and you're just driving into the distance it's got that pace to it that's a good one really dig that um, has sort of peppery double kicks in it for probably not the first time but there's you know there's a little bit of peppery little kicks in there um, again great melodies in this song um, two guitarists in the band I uh, don't know who's who there well that guy's the drummer uh, don't know from the names I just might say it's these two guys, but I could be completely wrong. Um, and uh, yeah, the next song on here is called Warrior, and that one opens up with uh, the band kind of recreating famous line from the movie The Warriors, which is, Warrior, come out and play! And they do that on there. So that was fun. I liked hearing that. Another ripping track, that one, that was a good one. Um, and then the final track, Viper, that gives us the Iron Maidenisms again. A bit like how Satan left that kind of material for the last track, and that's what you get with Viper. It's it's definitely into the more you know British heavy metal sound. But remember, American band here, 1984. Um, yeah, and it, this is a belter. It's a shame these guys only did these six tracks. I don't know if there's some lost tracks on a compilation. I didn't find anything like that. Um, if you do know anything more about it, do let me know. But yeah, really taken by this. Uh, the cover, of course, is fantastic. Take a look inside. And nothing too exciting, no lyric sheet or anything, at least in my copy. But um, yeah, your standard road racer, road runner. Really nice, um, really strong VG Plus near mint on that. The it's got a few scuffs, but they're pretty much on the inner. It's the same on both sides. So there you go. Um, really happy with this one from Dark Age. Uh, where do you think? Well, what do you think about this particular? release all those guys your, your Allens and your Aarons what do you think of Dark Age I'm curious how this sort of falls into your early 80s heavy metal um, wagon of goodness I, I don't know uh, I'm approaching this stuff you know new I, I did not listen to this kind of heavy metal when I was younger um, I'm coming to it all now so yeah I'm really curious what sort of the more expert and uh, you know journeymen of the, the genre think of Dark Age because I think it's a bit of a ripper Self-titled, Dark Age, 1984. And that's it. They are the four OG 80s presses I've managed to pick up in the last couple of months. So thanks for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please like, subscribe, check out the description where you can hear these things and check out this thing and this thing. I'll see you next time.